Good morning, South Africa, and thank you very much for the opportunity to update you on the most recent developments uh, around the coalitions uh, in South Africa. Yesterday's developments in the votes for mayor and speaker in both Johannesburg and Okilini metros came as a surprise to everyone, including us at the DA. We didn't ask for help from the EFF to lead these governments, and we did not expect to leave these two meetings with two new DA mayors and both these metros first ever female mayors. But the election of Dr. Mpopolatze and Tanya Campbell as the new mayors of Johannesburg and Ekuleni respectively signifies an incredible opportunity for these metros. Now I know both these women well and I can vouch for their character, their commitment and their willingness to do whatever it takes to put the interests of the people first. Their first priority, and ours, will be to ensure stability in these governments and work at solidifying coalitions with parties that share our governing principles and our commitment to the people. If we can get this right, today could be the start of a bright new chapter for these cities that are crying out for stable governance and better leadership. And I want to give the residents of Johannesburg and Ekeleni my word that as long as they have a DA-led multi-party coalition in charge of their metro, we will always seek to act in their best interest and do all we can to make their city a better place to live in. I want to reassure residents that there will be absolutely no compromise on our principles in order to stay in government. We are here to honor our pre-election commitment of governing well. We're certainly not here to cling to power at all costs and would sooner return to the opposition benches than give ways to demands that are unrealistic, corrupt, or which would require us to govern badly. I also want to make it absolutely clear that we did not solicit the support of the Economic Freedom Fighters or Action SA for that matter for the candidates in these metros. There was no deal made with them and there is no quid pro quo for supporting our candidates. All we offer these parties is the opportunity to be on the right side of history. In the coming days, we will put proposals on the table to end corruption, improve service delivery, and to attract investment to these cities in order to create the jobs that are essential to lifting people out of poverty. It will then be up to them to show whether they are interested in this agenda or not. We look forward to working with any party that shares the vision for fixing these metros and providing a pathway out of desperate poverty for millions of South Africans. But we are under no illusion about the stability of these governments as they now stand. I think it's very clear to all that the EF voted against the ANC more than they voted for the DA. They extracted no concessions from us and they will get none. What this means is that these governments could very well be short-lived. But whether they last five years or five days, I can assure you that the DA will use its time in office entirely in the service of the residents of these metros. That is the only reason we do what we do, and the only reason there ever should be for contesting elections. All we can do is hold firm on our principles, which is precisely what we did throughout the election campaign, throughout the coalition negotiation process, and right up to yesterday's council votes. Now we came under enormous pressure, but we didn't budge for a minute on these principles. We made it very clear that we would rather remain in opposition and put ourselves in a compromised situation in an unstable or paralyzed minority government. None of that have changed. The EFF and Action SA's support for our candidates came with no strings attached. And everyone who voted in support of a DA candidate yesterday knew that we would not allow a gun to be held to our head in this arrangement. The crucial threshold that was crossed yesterday was a psychological one. Today, the whole of South Africa knows that the ANC can be beaten. We no longer live in a single party dominated democracy, and that is a watershed moment in our history. Analyzing why various parties chose to vote for our candidates, 
is of less importance than what happens from here on out. Because right now, we have a golden opportunity to start correcting the course of these metros, to clean up government, to end corrupt contracts, and to reprioritize spending in order to deliver better services to poor communities, open more opportunities for poor residents, grow the local economy, and most importantly, inspire hope for these cities and our country's future. This is a momentous task at the best of times. From the vantage point of a fragile minority government with a hostile administration and facing a huge opposition bloc, both in our councils and in provincial governments, the challenge becomes Herculean. Add to this depleted budgets, poor revenue collection, infrastructure decay and huge service delivery backlogs. And it must become clear, none of these cities can be turned around overnight, especially if we cannot ensure stability in complex minority coalitions. But the DA has managed difficult coalition governments before, and we are up for this challenge. I can also assure you that no DA-led government has ever been afraid of hard work or daunted by long timelines. As long as we can remain in office and work alongside parties that share our big optimistic vision for these metros, we will chip away at that mountain of work and start turning Johannesburg and Ekeleni and any other cities we may win today into the caring, inclusive and economically vibrant places we know they can be. But we will also make it known if and when parties deliberately frustrate these efforts, whether this is through interfering with the administration or thwarting budgets and bylaws, if we cannot pass these crucial votes, we will be vocal about which parties obstructed or frustrated our efforts at good governance and pro-poor governance. At the same time, we're going to work hard to make these governments less vulnerable by doing all that we can to build majority coalitions that don't rely on voting support on a case-by-case -case basis from parties outside of a coalition. To do this, we will maturely and generously and with humility, reach out to the parties that haven't been part of our coalition agreements to date. We will make the case to them that the only way to make progress in these metros and then protect this progress from the dangers of an unstable minority government is by building an unassailable majority. Throughout this process, we will keep you informed and as we've committed before, we will make all of our agreements public. Already, we have successfully put together coalition governments in various other municipalities across the country, each of which comes with its own unique challenges, which we are going to have to manage over the next five years. We've also secured outright majorities in municipalities in three provinces other than the Western Cape, where we intend to demonstrate that the best possible governing outcome in this country is an outright DA government. And although the situations in Johannesburg and Ekeleni or a different ball game altogether, we also see this as an opportunity to demonstrate what the DA working together with other parties is capable of in government. These two metros, as well as potentially Chwane and Etigweni, depending what happens in the council votes today and tomorrow, now stand before a critical crossroads. The removal of the ANC could not come at a more opportune time, less than three years out from the next national and provincial elections. And we have a rare chance now to usher in a new ANC-free era for these metros. But this is going to require maturity, cooperation, and a commitment to selfless service from all parties involved. This is not a game of political chess or checkers, as some have called it. This is about doing what's right by the people who live in these metros. It's about responsible, mature, accountable governance that improves lives and restores hope. And that is never a game to us. In the coming days, I will convene with the party's federal executive, as well as our newly elected mayors and governments, to begin the process of establishing sound and stable governments across South Africa. And in line with our commitment to remain transparent and accountable, we will have follow-up briefings where there will be an opportunity for the media and the public to ask questions about these developments. We now turn to making generous humble offers to other parties who share in these visions for this metro to now put previous differences aside, previous prejudices that people may have had to one side and to come together to act in the best interests of the people of those municipalities who are now looking to us to provide leadership 
into the future. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we look forward to keeping you updated as the developments occur.